Welcome to the second part of our series on co-integration tests in AVUs. We said this in part one that after performing stationarity tests, you are likely to have three outcomes. It's either the series are integrated of order zero, that is they are levels stationary, or they are enforced different stationary, that is integrated of order one. The third outcome could be that the series are integrated of different orders, having a combination of I.O. and I.1 series. That is what that implies. This tutorial, we are only going to focus on the second scenario, if the series are integrated of order 1, that is, stationary after first difference. If you have a situation like this, it is assumed that the variables are stationary in first difference, that is, they are all integrated of order one. So what should you do? Number one, co-integration test is necessary to establish a long-run relationship either between or among the variables. In this case, we assume that a long-run relationship in the model exists, despite the fact that the series are either drifting apart or they are trending upwards or downwards. In the literature, there are two cointegration tests that can be performed. You have the Engel-Granger cointegration test and the Johansen cointegration test. This tutorial, I am only going to focus on the Johansen cointegration test. The null hypothesis of the Johansen cointegration test states that there is no cointegration equation while the alternative is simply the null is not true or there are cointegrating equations. But there is an important thing to note if you want to perform the Johansen cointegration. The variables that you are using must be in their level form and not on their first difference. It is also okay to use the log transformation of the raw variables as I have done in this example. So do not use the first difference of the variables. Use the variables the way they are, either in their level form or after you have uh, done your log transformation on the raw variables. And what will be your decision criteria? One thing to also note is that the Johansson quantification test will result in you having two uh, outputs, two results. You have the trace result, the trace value, and the max Egan statistics. So your decision criteria number one, rejection is at the 5% level. And secondly, if the value of the trace statistics and the max Egan statistics, if these values are greater than the 5% critical value, you are to reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, you fail to reject the null. So watch out for the values of the trace and max Egan statistics. That will help you to know whether you are going to reject the null or fail to reject the null. If use is launched, I'll be using these three variables. The log of PCE, PDI, and GMP already as a group data here. So it is under the assumption that these three variables are integrated of order one. So let us begin by going to quick, click on group statistics, Manova to Johansen cointegration test, click on that. The variables are already listed in the series list dialog box. You can see them PCE in log form, PDI in log form, and GDP in log form. These are all the levels form of these variables. They are not in their first difference. Click OK. Also, under the cointegration test specification, I'm going to use the, uh, the, the spec having just the intercept and no trend. I maintain the lag as automatically generated between lag 1 and 2. Nothing else is being changed here or modified. I click OK. Here on the screen is the output of the Johnson test. We are only interested in the trace statistics, the value of the trace statistics, and the value of the max agent statistics. You can also see that the series are displayed here, the log of PC, PDI, and GDP. Let's look at the hypothesized number of CEs. CEs here simply means co-integrating equation. And here you can see none, at most one, at most two. These three form the null hypothesis. 
which we can either reject or fail to reject. We can say that none is asterisk. Once um, the a hypothesis is asterisk, it's it's, it's, it will give you the likelihood of rejection. In this case, the null implies that um, there is no cointegrating equation in this model. That is what this none implies. And once it's asterisk, if you look at the trace value is 43.17, the critical value at 5% is 29.79. And remember our decision criteria. Once the trace is greater than the 5% critical value, you reject the null hypothesis. You can even say the prop value is very, very low, lower than 1%. So in this case, we are rejecting the null hypothesis that there is no cointegrating equation in this model. Let's look at the second null hypothesis. It says here that that's, uh, there's at most one cointegrating equation. Looking at the trace value is 11.35, critical value at 5% is 15.94. So we can see that the trace statistics is lower than the 5% critical value. So here we fail to reject the null. So we agree with the null hypothesis that in this model we have at most one cointegrating equation. Let's take a look at the second null hypothesis which is at most two. The trace value here is 2.8. Critical value at 5% is 3.8. Again, at 5% level, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So in essence, we also agree with the null hypothesis that in this model, we have at most two cointegrating equations. Taking a look at the max Egan statistics, our decision is not uh, different from what we made under trace statistics. Looking at the non, under the null hypothesis, the max statistics is 31.82 against the critical value at 5% of 21.13. In this regard, we reject the null hypothesis at 5% level. For the second null hypothesis of at most one, we cannot reject the null. So we agree that in this model, there are at most one, at most one cointegrating equation. The same thing uh, we agree with for the at most two null hypothesis. We fail to reject the null at the 5% level. So we can see that the outcome of the drafting integration here, there is um, an agreement from our outcome using the trace statistics and the max Egan statistics. We reject the null hypothesis that there is no cointegrating equation in this model. So we are rejecting the null hypothesis. Sometimes there may be a dilemma which results do I use, is it the tricks or the max? I think it's open to the researcher to use whichever statistics you want, depending on their relevant assumptions. But in this regard, we are fortunate to have the two statistics in agreement, so we reject the null hypothesis. So I'll wrap up by saying that when you have cointegration, what do you do? It implies that there exists a long-run relationship between or among the variables and that they can be combined in a linear fashion. It also implies that if there are shocks in the short run, it may affect individual movements of the series, but there will be long-run convergence. In this regard, estimates both the short run and the long run model, estimates both the VAR and the vector error correction model, in case the series are not cointegrated, that is, they do not exhibit a long run relationship, you cannot estimate uh, the vector error correction model, only estimate the short run model, which is the VAR. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos from Crunch Econometrics. Stay tuned for part three of this series, where we look at when the series are integrated of different orders.